Welcome to Libby's Leadership Lab. I'm Libby Gill, and I'm here to help you level up your leadership skills so you can create the professional life you really want without sacrificing your personal life. I've been guiding women executives and entrepreneurs for more than 30 years. First, as a C-suite corporate exec, heading communications at three major Hollywood studios, and now as a business owner and leadership coach. So let's get started. It's time to invent your future. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Leadership Lab. Now, listen, if you have ever had to sell anything, products, services, yourself to a, a hiring manager for a, for a job or a promotion, I mean, who doesn't have to sell? You are in for a treat because we have the expert who really speaks to women about selling in a skirt. So welcome, Judy Hoberman. I am so glad you're here. I am thrilled to be here, Libby, just absolutely thrilled. So couldn't wait for today. Oh, good. Well, first, tell our listeners a little bit about your background, which is really interesting. And then I'm going to get into the, the techniques and the strategies of selling in a skirt. So I've come through the ranks of all male-dominated industries. You name it, I've been at construction, copiers, printer, you name it, I've been in it. And I ended up in insurance, which was totally out of my comfort zone. I knew nothing about it. I didn't know I had to be licensed, nothing. I mean, zero. And I was a single mom at the time. And so I thought, well, this sounds exciting. And, um, and I had no choice because I need yeah. to feed the kids. Right. But it was, it was hundred percent commission also like all my other positions. I have never been paid anything. I've always okay. had to earn it anyway. So I go into this company and the gentleman that interviewed me said, you're exactly what we're looking for. Little did I know what he meant was I needed a female because he had no women. It was me. Ah, okay. And I, I mean, who would think, I mean, you know, this was a long time ago. Anyway, so, if so, a woman who's breathing. Right. That's right. Right. Yeah. Cause they, they used to say to me, you know, if you hire people, as long as they're breathing, it's good. And if it's a female and she's cute, she doesn't even have to breathe. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. So yes, I get into this whole thing and I kept hearing things behind my back. They would say, she takes too long. She's never going to make it. She asks too many questions. She's such a girl, blah, 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 blah. But we can say we tried it and we oh. had one. And I would hear this and I'm thinking to myself, well, this is just craziness because I know what I'm doing. I may not understand insurance hundred percent, but I get it. Anyway, a light bulb went off for me when I realized that my mindset had to be shifted. I had to make sure that I was doing what I needed to do for the right reason. And when I looked at my kids, I would say, they're amazing. And my one and only job is to protect them. So if I could protect them, why can't I protect your family and your family? And that's when the light bulb changed. Yeah, that makes sense. The right. whole entire, my whole entire career changed at that moment. So I started to be successful. And as I got successful, all of a sudden they were saying to me, how did you do that? What did you say? Why did you say that? Can you teach me? And so I kept getting promoted and it was my time to start recruiting. And I recruited differently. I didn't recruit women. I recruited to the opportunity. I recruited to, you know, whatever it was that people were looking for that I could offer them. I would recruit to that because I would ask so you, them what they're looking for. And so you're looking at what are their interests? What are their passions? Exactly. Are their exactly. Goals? Exactly. And so I would say to them, you know, tell me what your journey is. What, why do you want to do this? And they would have one of three, one of three answers. One was, I only want to be a producer and make a lot of money. And I would mm -hmm. say, great, let me show you the journey. Or they would say, I want to get into leadership. I would say, great, let me show you the journey. Right. Or they'd say, I want your position. I would say, excellent. Let me show you the journey. And you Whoever, could say that with credibility because you had done all of those things, right? Exactly. Yeah. And I also knew what they're, you know, what they were looking for and what they would need in order to be successful. It's one of those simple, elegant solutions that other people are like, ah, why didn't I ever think of that? See right. what really drives and motivates them. Yeah. But because, you know, the topic is always about sales. And I wasn't selling myself, I was selling an opportunity. Yeah. So when people would say to me, what do you do for a living? I would never say to them, I sell insurance. I do financial services. I would say, I've changed people's lives. That's all I would say. And the next question would be, how do you do, how do, you that? do that? Of course. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so I went through the ranks. I ended up with three agencies of my own. And then they offered me a position in corporate. Now, I had never been corporate before. I didn't even know anything about corporate. I didn't know what it meant to have a paycheck deposited into your checking account <laughs> every other week. Yeah. I knew nothing like this. And they also moved me to Dallas. And so 
when I realized that my position was not where I was supposed to be, you know when it's when it's wrong. You wait, may not wait, know when it's right, but you what, know when it's wrong. So wait, so you you got this great promotion, they moved you, they did all this, you're getting a paycheck and saying, ooh, something's not working here? Yes. Okay, how what yes. was the what was the giveaway? When did you know? I knew probably within the first six months because I came from the outside in. And yep. when you're on the outside, you hear all these wonderful things. We love everybody in the field. They're so fantastic. They're the kings, they're the queens. But when you come inside and you hear what they really think about you because they didn't like the uh, producers, they didn't like them because they made too much money. Yeah. And right. so I would come, you know, and so I was taking all the, the flack for that. So I would say to them, well, I was thinking one thing, but I would say to them, <laughs> you know, and you have to understand that the reason that all of us have a position inside is because of who's outside working and selling every day. Right. And so, you know, there was a lot of push and pull and whatever. And I just decided at one point that I was getting physically ill doing this. And so I would talk to my kids and they would say, well, quit. Quit. Yeah. Well, but how do you just quit? I wasn't married at the time. Uh -huh. It wasn't like I had another income coming in. You know, how do you do that? Yeah. And so finally, I thought, it's not about the money. It's about me. And I can't do this. And so I gave my resignation. They didn't take it for like a couple of months because they were afraid what would happen, you know, down the, the road. Field. Sure. So but when they finally took it, I, I said to myself, I need to just take a breath and figure out what I want to do next. However, I did know that if I had been starting out in that moment, what I would have looked like looked for was me. I not me, but somebody yeah. that would have understood women in this, you know, field and women in sales and women in leadership, somebody that would at least be able to say, let me show you the journey. Yeah. And so few people say that, right? I, I mean, I, I, I had a very similar path, except it was, I started in corporate, it took me 17 years to, to figure out. out this is not where I want to be. <laughs> it was like, yeah. I worked really hard to get where I didn't want to go, but and then the next step was now I want to be on the outside, but I was in the same boat. I had had been the sole support of the family for many years, and suddenly I'm, you know, I'm banking on myself, and yeah. it's yeah, it's tricky. That's a big leap. So it is. It is. So anyway, I started my company and I became that person. I did. I became that person. I would be yeah. either doing speaking or coaching or training, and I would be that person. What you needed was me because I could help you. I could show you the ropes. I could show you where the speed bump was. I can say to you, okay, here's what's gonna happen. Cause it's always interesting, Libby, in, in, especially in financial services, year three is the hard year, no matter what level you are, it's the hard year. Cause the superstars have started to level down a little bit. The, yeah. you know, the ones that are middle of the road are either middle of the road or gone. Yeah. So year three, and so nobody, nobody would listen to me until they got to year three and they saw their retention and they'd say, oh my goodness, like, why didn't we know you this? You were right. Yeah. Yeah. Year one, you, you have a little forgiveness, right? Because you're learning the ropes and you're learning your clients. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. And, so, and I started my company and that's where I am. That was 2009 in the height of the wonderful recession we had. Oh, yeah. Amazing how that so many companies <laughs> came out at that time. And here you are yeah. still around. Still around. Uh, so tell me how you you've got this entire book series and program. And I, I really recommend we'll put it in the show notes for everybody about selling in a skirt, which is yeah. obviously what you came to is that you sold differently. But what did you notice about other women in sales? And where did you come up with that selling in a skirt idea? You know, when you decide to start a business, you have to become you have to have a brand and you need to become that brand. Yep. And so I knew women. I knew sales, I knew leadership, I knew it, I was one, that was me. And so I thought of how would people remember who I am, what the name of my company was. And you know, and I didn't wanna use Judy Holberman, I just didn't wanna use it, that wasn't, that's not who I am. I'm not the center of attention, I just want to you know, serve and support. And so I tried to think of the things that I struggled with. And so I write them down and when I started writing things down, I noticed that if I just mushed them around a little bit, it spelled out skirt. <laughs> And so when I started talking about selling in a skirt, everybody's like, oh my God, I love that. The men would say, but I don't wear a skirt. And I'd say, it's not about the article of clothing. And then I would tell them like, oh yeah, absolutely. So, you know, sometimes you have to explain it. And sometimes people are like, mm, yeah, I don't wear a skirt or that's not for me. And, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. But when they okay, start to get down you. to, right. Yeah, right. If they, when they get down to business, but I will tell you, there was one woman, one woman that told me that she thought my, the name selling in a skirt was sexist. 
one woman through all of these years. years. Yeah. And she, she said to me, I, I so hate the name of your company, but yet they hired me to speak and she had to introduce me. Huh. And in my bio, selling in a skirt was there probably 10 times. <laughs> and I watched her like cringe every time she said oh, it. Oh gosh. <laughs> it's got a bit of whimsy to it though. It I think that's what's, it's memorable and it's, it's fun. memorable. And, right. And that's what a brand is about. It's a, yeah. it's, you just don't want to be boring. You want somebody to remember you. And it's, it's certainly yeah. that, but tell me about the acronym. Cause I know you've got it all. Like you said, you mushed it around. I see you playing Scrabble with the little right, right, S-K-I-R-T. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So what does that mean? What are those? Those are sort of your pillars of, of yes, sales. Yes, it strategy. is. And we have adjusted a couple of the wording to it, but really what Skirt started out and has been almost the entire time has been standing out. Mm -hmm. So now we just say stand out in a sea of sameness because, yeah. you know, okay. Yeah. The K is um, know your non-negotiables. What are you willing to, the deal makers and the deal breakers? Right. The I is invest in your relationships because that's if you don't, you have nothing. Yeah. The R is it's all about referrals because that's what the business is. And the T is time structure. Time structure. So, it's so we really all struggle with all of that. And if you just put them together, it, it, it really did spell skirt. So. Right. <laughs> right, it really does. Yeah. So how did you then, how, how do you go forward with that program? What does a day in your life look like or a day when you're training or teaching other people to understand the, and use them, those principles? Well, a lot of times companies will bring me in to do training. And so it's, the training is generally about uh, either the sales process or about leadership because you can't be a leader without selling and you can't sell without being a leader. And I know you and I are on the same boat because it's not that title doesn't mean that you are yeah. leading a million people. You could be just leading yourself. So, you have, yeah, and, you have, absolutely. and that's the biggest part of it. Yeah. So when I when they bring me in, we can we will probably break down skirt or if they have something that is just you know, it's so important to them that has to do with sales or leadership, we'll do that. But the philosophy, one of those always comes up. And I I'll always ask people, how many of you struggle with times, you know, time management? And they raise their hand, I'm like, okay, that's the T. And so we go back and forth, but each piece of it is a separate module. You know, if you had to do the whole thing in one sitting, you could, you could yeah. touch each piece and you could do exercises for each piece, but each one is a separate module because it's so important. And once you get it, you're like, why didn't I understand that before? And yet it's it's separate and yet it's all interrelated. Absolutely. You can't take a chunk of it out and still expect everything to work. You've got to have exactly. all of the pieces in line. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what's your favorite kind of assignment or your favorite kind of client to work with? I love the people that are open-minded yeah. and are coachable. Okay, that's the, my favorite. When when I keep hearing, I've done that. I've done everything. I've done wow. that. I've, I, 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 I'm like, okay, then I'm probably not for you. Yeah. But I also want people to have the same core values that I have. Because if you don't, what happens is, and that would be a non-negotiable, is, is you're compromising yourself all the time. And I've had that happen where people would say, well, just come in and just do this. Yeah. But I don't do that. Yeah. I know, but you could just do that. You're so, you're so fantastic. You could land on your feet. I know, yeah. but I, I don't do that. But I don't so, believe that's how it works. Yeah. Right. And right. so, I, you know, I mean, my favorite people are the ones that really want to learn and are like sponges. And I don't care what level you're at, whether you're brand spanking new or you've been a veteran forever. It doesn't matter because right. I just love the people that listen and and share their opinions because it's all about, it's not about me. I can take the spotlight away. Yeah. I want people to, you know, be able to say, this is where I'm struggling or here's what I did. And it was amazing. So we can celebrate that. I just want, I always tell people, you need to know your people, know your yeah. people, know your audience, know your people, know your group, just know who they are. So you're able to serve them. So funny. I always say my audience is, and, and like you, I've had my years in corporate and I've had my years as an entrepreneur. I just passed my years in, uh, in the corporate world. I've tw hit 20 years as a, at, w with my own business, uh, the mm -hmm. beginning of November. And I always say my audience is smart women and enlightened men. Yeah. And that's kind of like, I like the same as you. I like people that are ready to learn, to try something new and who are, who are open. And it, you're, you're right. It doesn't matter if you've been at this a million years, there's always a different perspective, a different something to learn. Absolutely. So what was the best advice or, or did you ever get any great or not so great advice on the way up in your sales career? My worst advice was when I was starting out in insurance and they would tell me, get in, get out, get the check, don't talk. That, that's what they told me. And they said, that's what we all do. And we are all very successful. And I thought that was 
the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. And I never tried it. I never tried it because I, I thought- I can't even imagine how that would work. Because they were on the phone first and they'd say, how much money is in your checking account? When's the last time you went to the doctor? Blah, 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 blah. And then they would show up and get in, get out and get the check. And so I thought that was the worst example of yeah. any kind of advice. The best example was always be focused, be authentically yourself and be generous with your time. And I truly believe that generosity is um, an undervalued quality. Yeah. And so I, I try at all times, not I try, I do at all times give more yeah. of my time than, than anybody really asks for because I think it's so important. And as a leader, you need to be doing that. So yeah. the cycle will continue because someone else will do that. And that's what, to me, that's what gets the sale. Absolutely. You, you give people more than they even expect. You give people things for free. And then, I, and I also think just from a, a tactical standpoint, people think, wow, if, if she gave me all that, imagine if I hired her. Right. What, what would right. happen then? Well, um, I, you know, I'll tell you, uh, when I was on the road and my height of my selling career, and it was, again, all, you know, life insurance, health insurance, um, it was never property and casualty, but it was really life and health. And I walked into every single appointment as if they were already a client. Yeah. I never walked in saying, oh, I wonder or whatever. It didn't matter to me. And I remember walking into a woman's house and she had an oxygen mask on, which meant I could not write her because we were heavily underwritten for the plan oh. that she was interested in. But it didn't matter because I did the entire presentation to her as if. And in return, not only did she thank me, she gave me so many referrals that it was craziness because oh, I took the time yeah, to, to spend time. Yes. And so mm -hmm. I think that when you're generous with your time, the, you know, the rewards are great. You can't go in saying, I'm going to be generous today and let's see how many sales I make. That's right. not being generous. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. So now you mentioned time structure as one of your pillars in the SKRT. Mm -hmm. So, and knowing that you are and, and recommend that people be generous with their time, do you have any tips for really being good about structuring time? And, and, you know, that's all we've really got is our time. So how do you do that? What do you tell people to do in terms of using time well? Well, first thing I tell them to do is take the technical side of their brain and, and just turn it off for one minute because most people are very visual. Yeah. And so what we used from day one, when I was back in sales in the nineties, what we used was a blotter size calendar. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and a lot of those. different, you know, right. And the color blocking different color markers. And yeah. the reason I say that is because it is very visual and you can see it. And so can the rest of your family. Yeah. And so you, it's, you can be very structured, but you have to be very strict as well. Now let's take the technical side, go back and get your phone, get your calendar and put every single thing in that you do every day or that you need to do in different colors. Yep. It's the same thing. So I, I still love the paper because to me, it's you know, again, visible and I can put it anywhere. That's how I actually created um, the success I had because I was a single mom. I had to make sure that my kids were taken care of first. So they were on the calendar first and then yeah. training came in or appointments came in or follow-up or whatever. And I was very good with my calendar. If you're not good with your calendar, how can you possibly have any kind of you know, time structure. And sometimes it's not that you're managing your time. You have to manage you. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm with you a hundred percent. I use my calendar on my computer, but I, it, green is personal, blue is appointments, red is another. It, it's exactly what I do, including the personal time. It's like yep. I, I take off Friday afternoons now and someday my, my vision is to take Fridays off, but I stop at three and it says family and fun. Yep. at three o'clock and it's a standing meeting with myself and my family and and Absolutely. otherwise something would gobble that up so yeah be, yeah and you know i sometimes i think that i need like a whole entire day just for me yeah. and so what i'll do is i'll block it off i'll call it presentation time which means i'm creating something yeah doesn't matter what that is but i also put autoresponders on so and it'll say i'll get back to you in 24 hours so nobody expects something in five minutes Right. And this way they're comfortable, I'm comfortable. And I just, sometimes I just do nothing. Most of the time I end up doing things. It's just that I'm not available. Yeah. You know? Well, I think that time, that think time, that downtime yeah. is, is so critical because yeah, I have a lot of clients who are working longer hours and harder than ever. And, and even removing their 20 minute driving commute where they could kind of switch gears is not happening. They turn off right. for dinner give the kids their baths, put them to bed and go right back online. And it's pretty exhausting. So I, I think that's so smart is that you really 
And, and you've got to be structured about downtime, as weird as that seems. But And you have to be structured about looking at your calendar and being strict with it. You know, most people say, well, I have my calendar, but I haven't really looked at it. Oh. You know, the, the point is to look at it. And sometimes yeah. you have to look at it the night before. So you get ready or the morning of. It just, it really depends on your personality. Yeah. I'm just very, you know, structured. Me too. I, I look at it the next day to before I set my alarm. And I usually wake up before the alarm and I usually wake up at the same time anyway. Me too. But if I've got an exceptionally <laughs> early meeting, it's like, oh, I got to be up and dressed and ready to go and online at 7 a.m., which is a, an hour earlier than typical. I want to know. I want to see it there. So, yeah, I, I can't imagine how people can live without it. But I hear the same thing sometimes. It's like, yeah, I think I put it in my phone. Yeah, it's maybe. Like, you think? <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, Judy, one last question. Well, next to last question for you, because in the spirit of the leadership lab, I love to give people an action homework assignment, a risk taker. I think leaders are, are the people that are willing to experiment to try new things. So I am wondering if you have a homework assignment, an action step, anything that you can leave with our listeners so that they can put what you've said into action, road tested in their lives. Yeah, I have a great, a great exercise and you just have to be ready for it. So here it is, and you've probably done it in some manner, shape or form. Um, somebody that you trust, go and ask them to describe you in three words, three. just three words. Don't do anything with it other than write it down. I want you to write down three words that describe you. You could do it before you ask them. And okay. when you're done and you have these two lists, compare them. Compare. Now, if they're exactly the same, then great. But if they're different, then something is not working. Something, the way that they're perceiving you. For instance, somebody told me, or many people have told me that I am um, intimidating, I'm unapproachable and way above your level. I'm like, that is so not me. But the truth of the matter is when I walk into a room, I'm shy. So I may not start a conversation. I might just oh. be. And then when someone talks to me, it's awesome. But most people didn't talk to me before I would come off a stage. And then they'd be like, oh my God. But they kept telling me that. So I asked my business coach and she suggested that to me. She said, now that you know what people think of you, because I did ask them, you have to either fix it or accept it. And I said, there's no way I'm accepting it. So <laughs> I had to write, I had to like, you know, put on my big girl panties, walk into a room and start a conversation. And it, you know, there's a whole story behind that. But the truth of the matter is get the words, get your words and compare them. And it's, and as a leader, you should know what your people think of you. You but, absolutely. I, I yeah. still believe there's some companies that have abandoned the 360 assessment where you ask people at all levels for that yeah. feedback. I think you just, the world is not set up to give you honest feedback. Either people find it awkward or confrontational or they don't want to hurt your feelings. They're but I think repercussions. All of them, what's that? They're afraid of the repercussions. Yeah, that too. Yes, especially <laughs> if they work for you. Yeah. But I think getting feedback and understanding and with my coaching clients, I find some are dead on. They know themselves so well and they know what the perceptions are. And others have, we all have little blind spots, but some people, it, it's this, this glaring um, yes. distance between what they think and what others think. And it's really, it's part of my job is to close that gap. So I think that is brilliant. Again, some of those simple ideas. And one reason I love this podcast now, just for me, and I hope for all the listeners is I have, I am doing everything everyone has suggested that I do. And it's so great to take these simple measures and say, you know what, I'm going to do that today. It's really easy. Put down those three words, pick up the phone or get somebody on a Zoom call and say, hey, what do you think? Even an email would work. It could be so simple. Now, let me ask you, if someone says, if you say caring and someone else says compassionate, if the words are similar, do you yeah. accept that? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. It's, so it's, it's more about when somebody says that you're intimidating and unapproachable, when you know that you are the most giving supportive person and somebody is telling you this and you yeah. think that you're portraying this uh, and all of a sudden you know you're getting this uh, you know that's when you have to really decide what am what is it that I'm doing what, how am I showing up yeah I thought it was going to be because you come on like a powerhouse look at you and your blazer and your necklace and you're all that's exactly together what, that's exactly that's part what of it but coming oh. in and being quiet that could be like you're just standing there 
like you know, who, sizing yeah. up the room. That would be exactly. scary. Yeah. You know, I did a TED talk on uh, the, your, your greatest missed opportunity. And it's all about prejudging people exactly right. like this. And um, I've always been prejudged just exactly how you said it. Look at your, you all put together. Yeah. And right before the TED talk, the person that was going to be speaking, I don't know, 10 people after me, she said to me the day before, she said, why are you at dress rehearsal? Look at you. <laughs> and I said to her, are you going to be here when I, when I do my talk? And she yes. said, yeah. I said, okay, we'll chat later. And after that, she came up and she hugged me and started to cry. She said, I didn't mean anything by it. I'm like, I know, I know. Yeah. You know what? I got a lot of that. And I used to think it, it's similar uh, when I was speaking and I thought, what, what is it? It was like, oh, I'm put together. I'm, you know, that sort of thing. And I'm, I'm tall and I'm thin. I was like, that's enough to give that impression. And so I started asking people just, just like you did. And and got a little bit of that. I think you've got it to a, a more like put together and powerful. I'm, I've, I've calmed down over the years. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, so I built into my, into my keynote that I started out waiting tables. I put myself through college waiting tables and all these crazy jobs I had as a hand model and a talking Christmas tree. And, and it really sort of diffused some of that, that people thought, oh, so her parents didn't send her to Smith and she got her doctorate on her, you know, no, I'm a regular working single mom, like a lot of you out there are. And yeah. it really does make a big difference because you don't come off as intimidating, I think, a bit. You are warm and giving and sharing of all this information. But because if, you've spoken to me. Yes, exactly. But if I just saw you, I might think, hmm, she's a little, yeah. Uh, interesting, interesting. So that one exercise, and you've done that, I take it, with the three words. Well, I did it because when I showed up at, you know, speaking engagements, I would, nobody spoke to me until I was done. And then they would say, oh, you're amazing. We love you, blah, 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 blah. And so it really was disturbing to me. And so yep. when I asked the question, I actually had to go in my car and because I was crying. Oh, and I that's thought, hard. how, right, how could that possibly be? So when I asked my business coach, she said to me, you are, um, you're an introvert and yep. you show up and you're very aloof. So people think that, but when they get to know you, you're not. So the way it changed was one day I showed up and I was wearing these very cool boots and you can see it in half of my pictures, yeah. you know, these boots. I saw. And yeah. this woman said to me, oh my God, I love your boots. And the first thing I thought in my head was, have I already spoken? Because she's speaking to me. That's the first ah, thing I thought of. Right. And so and then somebody else came up, somebody else came up. So the next time I spoke, I wore the boots. When it happened the third time, I thought I am like an athlete. I am not changing my boots. Yeah. Yeah, and it, so that became part of my brand because exactly. it's an icebreaker. And that's, it's, you know. Conversation starter. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. I, the same thing, going to the, speaking on, on the platform, you can talk to thousands of people and it's, it's comfortable because you know your material. If yeah. you go to the VIP party before you've spoken, to me, that is just horrible. That, it's the worst. They don't know you. You have to explain, justify your existence. I usually try to go outward. That's an amazing necklace you're wearing. Did somebody make that for you? It's that kind of thing. Because what right. do you do after you've spoken? They know you. They feel like they know you and they can talk to you, but it's really hard. Yeah. And I'm not a full-on introvert. If any of the tests, like the Myers-Briggs, I'm dead center, right in the middle. But I always say I'm a situational extrovert. You have to learn how to ramp right. it up. That's what I am. <laughs> yeah, you've learned to ramp it up. And it's right. this is a culture that it, it, it rewards extroversion. So we do have to learn, like it or not. There are yeah. times we really have to reach out and be extroverted. So Judy, this has been such a fabulous talk yes. and you, you gave so many, just like you said, so many generously gave so many tips to people. So where do we learn more about you, about selling in a skirt, about your programs, all the things that you can do for individuals and organizations? So you can find me at, my website is Selling in a Skirt. Obviously, it's, I try to make it very easy. Yeah. I'm on every platform at Selling in a Skirt. <laughs> uh, LinkedIn, it's Judy Hoberman. And um, I mean, I'm everywhere. I answer my own emails. So if you email me at Judy at Selling in a Skirt, I will answer them. And I, you know, seriously, if you go onto the website, there's so many things you can watch and listen to and download. And so there's a lot of good information there. Yeah, and if anybody forgets any of that, just Google selling in a skirt and, and there's only one person who will pop up and that's yeah. Judy. Yeah. So thank you so much for being thank here. This you. is really such great information. Thanks thank a lot, you. Judy. Thanks everybody. We will see you again next week.